I have really good news, and it restores my faith in the younger generations, specifically Generation Z. Let's explore! I've actually reported on this story some time ago. This is an update based off of a recent survey done about Credit Karma. And there was a report that has just been done again recently saying that how Generation Z are using cash now more than ever before. And uh, there's reasons for it. And a lot of it is based off of the economic conditions we find ourselves in. Because this report that I'm going to be referencing here from Fox Business just uh, pretty much amplifies the point that, you know, not, not everything is okay in the economy, much to how it would like to be portrayed by certain reports. We know that indeed uh, there is uh, some things at play here, especially with how they report the numbers that, again, are revised backwards or lower typically, and that does not make news when they're a revised uh, backward or downward rather but generation z which is the generation that was been that was born between 1997 and 2012 is turning to an old school trick to save money and that's carrying cold hard cash that's right uh, a whopping 69 percent of generation z is using cash more now than they did even last year, according to a new report by Credit Karma that, uh, that came out in May. Now, remember, I reported on this from previous news stories. I've talked about how Generation Z and the younger generations are using more cash. And this was, well, you know, sort of at the height of the pan uh, just after the pandemic and even beyond. And of course, with the scare of, you know, germs on money, you would think it would be the other way around. But that's not the case. So let's get into what this is about. Uh, let's put some anecdotal uh, interviews here by Todd Reinhardt, who is 23 years old from Overland Park, Kansas. He acknowledged that his generation doesn't overwhelmingly choose to carry cash, but he does try to save, uh, have some on him, adding that it's nostalgic to use. So that's his point of view. And, you know, because it's not seen as, I guess, you know, one of those things is kind of a nostalgia. And, and I think there's something to be said for that reason, although I don't think that's the majority. That's from his point of view. But most Gen Z shoppers with iPhones said they use Apple Pay because you don't need a wallet, an actual physical wallet. You can simply tap your phone to pay. But others believe that feature makes it too easy to spend money. And that is part of the problem, is it not? It's too easy. That's why we're kind of an indebted nation at this point. It's literally too easy, which is one of the reasons why having gold and silver kind of provides a stopgap from being able to easily spend it because it's not transacted as currency, but is indeed a type of money that provides a store of value. And this is another reason why this is good. And I'm going to get to that in a moment from what we have been seeing here in this community later in the video. Um, and so of the Gen Zers who use cash to pay for purchases, 59% say they do so as a way to budget. There you go. Budgeting is, is a concept that, uh, you know, has been lost on many of the younger generations. And I think that now it's, it's making its way back, even if it's being forced upon them. And to some extent, considering the inflation is here and people are struggling right now. 64% say they spend less money when they pay with cash, per the report. And folks, let me tell you something. This is why I'm a cash guy. Exactly right. I spend most of my money on cash, even if I can get rewards from a credit card. I'm just not worried about it. I'm just bringing cash because I can budget better that way. And that's something that I've done all my life. In downtown Minneapolis, Eli Amaris was on his way to Target when he said so everything he's learned about money has been self-taught, indeed. And that is a shame because there is really no talk of fiscal responsibility in our public education system. In fact, I heard on the radio about a youth program for ages uh, 6 to 12 
of a sort of a superhero, uh, cartoon characters that uh, that provide some learning material for a fee. You can learn about finance and fiscal responsibility uh, for your kids by getting this thing. But I tell you what, you really even don't even need that. I believe parents is parents' responsibility to teach the value of of spending and the value or the value of fiscal responsibility and what spending is about and the consequences of spending and the benefits of of spending uh, on certain things and not on other things and being uh, being able to hold back and how to spend smart. You know, there's a lot of different lessons you can teach with that, but nonetheless. Um, I have a bank account, says Eli, but I try not to touch it. And when I spend, I like to use cash, Amara said, adding that budgeting was hard when he didn't have cash because the money showing on his digital bank account didn't feel real. Exactly right. This is tangible. You know, a couple of quarters in your pocket, um, dollar bills that you can feel and touch. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but this is not actual paper money. This is cotton fiber linen. It's a secret formula, a secret, uh, you know, recipe, as you, as it were, from the um, Massachusetts Crane Paper Company, and uh, that is our paper money. But yes, indeed, times are tough, and 70% of Americans say they're stressed about finances right now. That's an overwhelming number from a report from CNBC. I am more able to stop myself when I see, when I visually see and feel and touch how much money I have left, he said. Vlad Wingert, 21 years old, said he prints cash out when he gets paid by mobile deposit. Now that's kind of an interesting choice of words, you know, prints cash, uh, you know, but he's not really printing cash. So he can sort it for rent, food, and rideshare apps. He said it's helpful for him to physically feel his money. The amount of cash can only be used for this, and I can't go past it, Wingard said, while describing his process, saving money with cash. It is a self-budgeting tool. You get out a certain amount of money out of your checking account every payday, and you got it. You, 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 uh, it's in your hand, and you can, uh, you can roll with it. And that's the, your limit and you can't spend any more, you can't spend any less. In fact, I like to call it my road money because it's the money that travels with you on the road and you are limited to that um, for any, within any pay period. University of St. Thomas financer, Professor Dave Vang said it can be helpful to divide cash into envelopes. Yes, we've talked about that here. I have what's known as the uh, golden envelope here. It's an envelope and I've decorated as such. You can put money aside, in this case, to save up for gold. Uh, I have a challenge that's ongoing that several of you have are partaking in to buy an ounce of gold, to save up for an ounce of gold. Just set some cash aside in an envelope. So that's something that we've been talking about on this channel for quite a number of years, for sure. And uh, it's something that I encourage everybody to do to help finance and to in order to uh, keep keep you, uh, you know, honest with your money for your own budget and your own finances. I think it's a well-worn trick that's been used for a long time for budgeting. It's certainly becoming more popular now, Vang said. It's a well-known practice among people dealing with people who are mentally handicapped to use cash. Yes, indeed. So, you know, I didn't mean to insult anybody's intelligence when I made my uh, my uh, challenge for the Golden Envelope Challenge a number of years ago, as inspired by yet another channel in this community, but it is a good way to do it. And I think that even the smartest among us, it's a good idea to go back to basics. Vang said higher and higher percentages of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And when you are living paycheck to paycheck, it's important to make sure you know exactly where every dollar is. The term cash stuffing has popped up on Generation Z's favorite search engine, TikTok, and similar to the cash and envelopes methods. Charlotte Hall has over 160,000 followers combined with her TikTok and Instagram accounts. She got into cash stuffing, stuffing after a $1,200 car repair bill a year ago caught her off guard. She wanted to make a budget uh, that would allow her not to go off track as it was an unexpected bill. You take your variable expenses, things like your hair, your nails, your groceries, your gas, and you put those monies out in cash. 
and you allot a certain amount of those monies to the envelope and you only spend what's in the envelope on that any given on that particular item uh, and you when you're setting limits for yourself but you're able to physically hold the cash in your hand which tells you your brain I better stop spending at a certain point because your 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 wad gets less and less Hall said that the people who interact with her page are mostly Gen Zers and Millennials and live in New York and they're budgeting for family. And so your best way to leverage your variable expenses is to try to decrease some of your fixed expenses. And one of these ways I teach is to decrease your fixed expenses is to call companies that are out uh, in business and ask for discounts. Yep, ask for discounts. You also cut back on certain things, whether it be coffees at Starbucks or you do what I did and you stop paying a barber to cut your hair. If you have really short hair or losing your hair like me, well, you might as well just buy a razor yourself and do it yourself. The best $20 I've ever spent paid for itself within a couple of months because I'm not paying a barber to do it. Um, so things like that, you know, you cut back on certain things when you realize you, you really are smarter with your money when you can actually see it, feel it, and touch it. And that leads me to the second way why this is good for precious metals. Because when you have cash in hand and you see that it is something tangible, of tangible value, then you start to thinking. And this leads to what's been happening that's not reported under the news, is that more and more young millennials and Generation Z folks are buying gold and silver. It's remarkable and amazing to see that the growing demographics for buying gold and silver to store your wealth is growing. And there's a lot of young people uh, doing it now. That is quite encouraging, indeed it is. In fact, if you are a Generation Z or a young millennial, I want you to post in the comment section down below that you are stacking and that you are a Generation Z or millennial, because kudos to you, congratulations. And that is amazing. And it's, it's awesome to see that occurring and happening. And I'm proud of you. Uh, and so that's the way we do it. We stack gold and silver, and this is good for us because we have it in the physical form. And all of this is bad for central bank digital currencies because uh, the more the people have tangible wealth in their hand, even if it's in form of coins and bills, um, and by extension, more and more of them are stacking gold and silver, that's not good for central bank digital currencies. And I think you're gonna to start to see Generation Z kind of revolt or push back against central bank digital currencies, because that's all about the digital transactions and they want that convenience, but we like cash. And there's no way they can tie a dollar bill directly to you, at least. They may be able to put a QR code on it to where you scan it that, that has a timestamp and where it was spent, but it's not going to really come back to you personally um, in that regard. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I hope you found this video insightful, informative, and educational. And I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.